Okay, so uh, next homework is going to be due Wednesday with an asterisk, right, for those that are in class today. Um, and let's see, we're probably going to be ready to, to talk a little bit about Chapter 5. And uh, there's not much to, well, in this chapter what we're going to be doing is kind of formalize some of the observations that you probably have made um, through working the problems in Chapter 4. Uh, that is the kind of the to establish the nature of the uh, equilibria in a dynamical system, and as you will see, there's going to be difference whether the dynamical system is continuous or discrete. Okay, so um, let's start talking about continuous systems, although it doesn't. Um, matter yet, the order in which we do it, but let's um, talk about the eigenvalue method. For stability, okay. So, first of all, what is stability? So, I'm going to illustrate here a two-dimensional di two system. dynamical system continues so continues case first so dx dt is some notice we're still talking about a um, autonomous system so there's no time dependence explicit in the right hand side of your of your of your system okay and remember that we say x star uh, an equilibrium or steady state uh, means that the right hand side vanishes right at at that point uh, question is so definition an equilibrium x star is called asymptotically stable and oftentimes we'll just I mean if we need to we're going to specify but otherwise just kind of refer to stable um, if uh, what happens if the solutions starting at nearby points for any solution of dx D of the of the system uh, which starts near and this is the quite imprecise linear x star okay so on the picture, it basically says, you know, things could, if you are far away from, from this from this equilibrium, so if you are, you know, a certain distance away, then you know your your solution may do weird things, right? They may not go towards this equilibrium, but as long as the ones that are close to it, okay. Um, so as long as there is some sort of neighborhood of vicinity of the point, let me use a different color here. So as long as there is a vicinity of the point, so that once you start in that vicinity, you're actually uh, approaching the, the the equilibrium point. That's when we say that equilibrium is is, is asymptotically stable. Okay. Um, We say that um, X star is an unstable equilibrium um, well let me just do it first it's a stable but not 
asymptotically stable is a stable equilibrium if um, if the solutions x of t stay close to x star in the vicinity for initial conditions starting in the vicinity of x star for all um, initial conditions say x naught in the vicinity of x star. So what's the picture here? The, well, certainly if it's asymptotically stable, if it goes towards that point, then right, let's say this is the so if it goes towards that point from all directions, let's say, right, then this is asymptotically stable, right? What would be something that's stable but is not asymptotically stable? And again, it's in the plane, it's, there aren't many ways in which this can happen, but... So if it's some sort of a, if let's say it's, there are periodic orbits here, so there are pre periodic solutions, right? that don't actually go towards the point, but don't go away from the point either, right? So that's kind of the, again, the definition is quite imprecise. Um, there's a much more precise definition with epsilons and deltas, but, um, okay. And again, probably the um, easiest one to formulate is, is X star is an unstable equilibrium if it is not stable, okay? But again, in the plane, so this, in 3D or in, in, in several dimensions, things can get quite complicated. Um, the, the possible, the possible uh, behaviors of a dynamical system near an equilibrium. But in 2D, um, situation basically says, well, if there is one point, actually, if there are points getting as close as possible to the equilibrium that actually diverge, so that actually the trajectory goes away from it, and that's an uns that that qualifies this as an unstable equilibrium, right? Yep. Are we just using uh, unstable and semi-stable? Um, so I will call this unstable, uh, but yeah, you can you can kind of. Uh, be a little bit more specific. Um, for linear systems, so so this is really in, not just for linear systems, right? We're, ta we're talking about um, nonlinear general systems, okay? But for linear systems, there is that uh, idea of semi semi stable. But let's not complicate. But okay, so so in other words, you could have certain directions in which it actually goes towards that, right? Or you could have one direction, but you see you could have other directions in which it doesn't happen, right? So that's kind of a possible scenario for an unstable equilibrium. Of course, a much, uh, a much more obvious scenario would be if it is just straight going away from it, right? Again, not necessarily straight lines as I plot here, but um, or it could also be it's spiraling out, right? So I should have said here, asymptotically stable is if it goes straight in, or it could actually be spiraling like this, so it never. I mean, it doesn't kind of directly. Um, approach that but so it's a different pattern but still asymptotically stable right so these two are asymptotically stable this is s stable or sim, sim you know 
uh, not asymptotically stable, so but not asymptotically. And this is unstable. Okay, so the, the point is that all these behaviors can happen very easily in a, in a nonlinear system. And actually, you could have several uh, equilibrium in the same system, one of one nature and others of, of different natures. Okay? Um, so we'll, we'll see examples of this kind of um, of this kind of things, but um, so let's <coughs> fix an equilibrium x star for for our system, and let's see how can we actually detect whether it's a stable, unstable um, equilibrium by methods other than just plotting the, the face portrait, okay? Or the solution curves near that equilibrium, right? So, uh, so, the, so to establish the stability of this equilibrium, First, um, we linearize the dynamical system around x star. So and here's what we mean by that. Okay, so pretty much what we do is we do uh, we've done this when we talked about Newton's method, but this this is a different context now. Um, we expand in terms of its Taylor series, or if you want, just we look at the linearization of the right hand side around x star, okay? And that's that's how it looks, even if f is a vector, right? In fact, if f is a vector, then so here f is f one. F1, F2, Fn. So what would be this object here? So if this is a, if this would be just a scalar, then this would be just the derivative, right? But since this is a vector, what is this, what is the meaning of this? It's a matrix, right? It's a, it's a. It's an n by n matrix because remember this is n by one, and you want to multiply something to n by one and still get n by one. So you have to have an n, n by n. So it's a it's a matrix and it's the Jacobian, right? Matrix of f at x star. And how is it comp how is it explicitly? Well. At any point, the Jacobian matrix is putting each each derivative, the derivative of each each component of that of that uh, right hand side with respect to each, each variable. Right. So you can see this. That formula, well, and it's not an equality, right? It's it's an approximate equality, right? So that's the linearization. It's as if you take the linearization of each component, F1, and you write it, right, in terms of, so you're going to get basically this row times the x minus x star, and so forth. So that's that's the simple reason why you assemble it, this matrix in this form, right? You take each component, um, and on each on each row, you you uh, take the partial with respect to each variable. Okay. So you can see it's n by n. All right. Okay. But now we said that x star is an equilibrium, so this guy is actually going to be zero. Right. So sort of. A rough conclusion is that f of x can be approximated by 
uh, by this um, for x near x star. Okay, so again, one can say how how good this approximation is and other things um, in terms of the distance between x and x star, but we'll just see this on 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 uh, on. on on the pictures, I guess. I mean, we won't be doing exact the uh, errors, what the, the errors in, a, in this approximation. Okay, but one can do. Okay, so so as a consequence, we can approximate or associate, if you want, um, an approximation. of the dynamical system, original one, with this new one, which is which is simply, you know, replacing the right hand side with its linearization. Okay? Now, it's not clear that the two pictures, the two Direction, you know, direction fields and, and face portraits will look um, similar, and actually they don't, right? Except when when x is very close to x star. So so when you focus it near the uh, equilibrium, these two dynamical systems will have similarities, right? Okay. Now, what's the advantage of this dynamical system? Well, this dynamical system is actually is a matrix times x, right? So in fact, um, making a change of variables, which is nothing but a shift, a translation. Uh, so I'm going to call y to be x minus x star, right? Well, what does that mean? That means that if I'm following a solution x of t of the original system, right? What would be the derivative? Excuse me. What would be the the translated one? So dy dt is simply dx dt, right? So this gets replaced by dy dt. This gets replaced by y, right? So this, um, the dynamical system becomes dy dt equals a times y. Okay. All right. So uh, if you've never seen, I mean, if you've never seen linear systems. Although, um, probably, uh, maybe a little bit you've seen in, a, in an OD course. Uh, you, the thing to say about this is, uh, if if it's a system but it has linear, you know, uh, dependence on the on the variables y1, y2, yn, then it's it can be solved. You can actually find the solution explicitly, and you can actually. Um, Say everything about this behavior of the solutions of the system by just looking at the matrix A. So this was something far from from true if if this was if the original you know for the original system right where it was nonlinear. I mean there was no matrix, right? It was nonlinear right hand side. Uh, but the moment you linearize around an equilibrium, you can actually get this matrix A and then Read, the, read a lot of information off that matrix. Information which actually translates then into the behavior of the system, and as I said, this system approximates the original system, but only in the neighborhood of that point of that equilibrium. Okay. So, what is it so good about um, system systems? of linear 
differential equations like this. Okay, so I mean again this I'll just give an example one n equals two, so you see this in in its full beauty here. The ones and the twos. Okay. So you have a system like this. That's that's how that's that's what that, that means, right? Well, as I said, can be solved explicitly. Okay? And it may not be very clear um, how at this moment, but let's imagine A is diagonal. As usual, we start with the simplest cases. So let's say the matrix is lambda 1, lambda 2, 0, 0. That's, then the system really looks dy1, derivative of y1 is lambda 1, y1, and derivative of y2 is lambda 2, y2, and that's, it's not really a system because these two equations are, are decoupled, right? So you can write y1 is c1 into lambda 1 t, right? y2 is c2 into lambda 2 t, right? You can solve it explicitly. And uh, so y, which is um, y of t is y1 and y2, you know, can be written as a, as a what? Let me write it like this, e to lambda 1, e to lambda 2. Oh, please. 0, 0. And then c1, c2. In fact, let me, I mean, remember the constants, they're not, well, they are arbitrary, but they usually uh, tell you or they're, match the initial conditions, right? So at time zero, those are the values of the constants, right? So I can put it y1 of zero, y2 of zero. So in other words, for this system I can write this as y at zero, right? That's that's how you solve it. Again, this is for A equals this very simple diagonal matrix. Now, that's fine, but we, want, we really want to compute the um, solutions when the matrix is not diagonal, necessarily diagonal, right? So that's where this notation comes uh, through, and it's called the exponential of a matrix. And it's not, this is, there's a t here, so I'm multiplying t times a and I'm taking the exponential of that, right? t is a scalar, t is a time. So t times a is, a, is a, in this case, 2 by 2 matrix, right? And what does it mean through exponential of matrix? Well, you know how to exponential a number, right? The so exponential of matrix obviously is, um, in this case, if the matrix is diagonal, it's simply the exponential of the diagonal entries, right? And putting them on the, on the, right? So how about um, if A is not diagonal? Well, it turns out that you have basically the same, uh, well, you have a similar expression For the solution of this of this non, of the of this linear system, where e to the t a, or let's call it e to the b, right? So I have a matrix b 
which will be the TA, is the exponential of the matrix A of B and is defined as so the definition of this new operation is sort of very similar to it's a mimicking sort of what happens in real with real num with real numbers um, right so it's using the series I mean this is one of the, the there are several ways to think of the exponential uh, of a number right but uh, one of them is this right so it's b to the n over n factorial so it's raising the in this case it's raising the matrix to powers and then dividing by the scalar and then adding everything together well what you get in the end is you get a series and it turns out that this series is actually convergent and so it has a limit right the partial sums have a limit and the limit is always defined as e to the b yeah Mm -hmm. So, okay, so, uh, so this formula, well, I mean, we're rarely going to be using this formula to compute the exponential level of a matrix, okay? So we're not going to be using it, but we need to know what, what you know, when we see this, when we see that, that, uh, that uh, notation that we know what it is, right? It's a matrix that's obtained in some fashion from the matrix A, of course, T times A, so you can see E to the T times A is is what? This is identity, right? Plus T A plus T square over 2 factorial, right? And so forth. Now, just so you um, you're convinced, so I can convince you that e to the ta times y not does indeed satisfy the linear system that we we're trying to solve. Uh, you can think of just taking the derivative. Take the derivative of this expression with respect to t, right? And see if you get what do you need to get? You need to get a times this thing, right? So one can check that the derivative is in fact um, well, you can see it, it's kind of nicely put there so you can take derivatives, right? Assuming you can take derivative term by term, which all of this kind of need some sort of uh, argument, right? But assuming that that's possible, I mean, it's always possible, so identity is zero, right? Oh, hold on, I'm sorry, I have to, I'm multiplying by y not here, so. Oh well, I guess we can do it without y not. We can just think about taking derivative with respect to t of that thing. So this is zero plus a plus what's t squared over 2 factorial dif differentiated? t a squared, what's t cubed over 3 factorial? It's t squared over 2 factorial. You see, so basically it's just an a times this, the same series that defines the exponential. So this is a times e to the t a. So, okay. So, if if y of t is e to the t a y not, it means that the derivative with respect to y, uh, t of y of t y not is just a constant in time, right? So that's just is is act as a constant when you differentiate it. Uh, so it's just going to be a derivative with respect to t e to the t a why not, right? So it's derivative of e to the ta and that's a e to the ta 
Why not? So this is A, Y. Okay? So you see where he started? And where we ended up? It says that this, this thing uh, solves the system, right? Now, the only other thing that needs to be said is, um, how do I know that I don't have other solutions of this system that are not of that form? And um, anybody has any idea? How, how do I know that all the solutions of this system look like that? Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like, yeah, it looks like an integrating factor, but, um, and you're right. So, so if you mod, you can actually finesse it so that, um, if you multiply by e to the minus ta, I believe, I believe, that would be the integrating factor. So you have d by dt y of t minus a y of t equals zero. You multiply by e to the t a, right? Minus. And this would be exactly d by dt y of t e to the minus t a. So this is conversely. Right? So then. Let's say I believe you have to multiply it to the left. Uh, yeah. So that's a wrong. That's that's an impossible operation, right? Because it's is the matrix applied to a vector, right? And so this means that e to the minus t a y of t is constant. If the derivative is zero. It means it's constant in time, right? Well, what constant can it be? Well, it's whatever it is at time zero, so this is y not, right? I should say that the exponential of the zero matrix is one, right? In that series, there's only the identity that, I mean, the identity, okay? So, right, so then y is, you multiply back e to the ta, why not, right? Okay. So, so I hope I convinced you that this expression really is the the, the general solution of, or or the solution of that dynamic of the dynamical system, y prime equals a y, and this vector is just the initial condition, right? Okay. So now the only thing left is, um, so given A, what is e to t a? Well, we saw. Well, we didn't we didn't do the computation, but we we saw that if this is diagonal, let me let me use the word d here, uh, is lambda one lambda two. It's actually a good exercise. Take that series. It's not hard to see that the series definition, the definition of the series, right, uh, as a series solution. It's just basically taking powers of d and powers of a diagonal matrix by just raising the diagonal matrix to that power, and then summing it up. And here's p here pops the exponential of t lambda one and the same with e t lambda two, right? So it's just decoupled. But in general, uh, it's um, a scary word. Jordan canonical form are needed, and so if n is three or higher, this can this can get quite complicated. Uh, in terms of describing what the Jordan canonical form of a matrix is, but 
in, in n equals 2, there are um, very few different cases. Okay, So it's worth to, to list them. Um, well, before I list them, so let, let me let me say what this is. So this is a theorem, which is a linear algebra. Fact, um, it says that for any matrix, and again, let's do it for n equals two. For any two by two matrix A, there exists. An invertible matrix U and a Jordan block diagonal matrix J such that Here's, here's how this matrix looks. Uh, so the matrix looks A, U, J, U inverse. U is, U is invertible, so there's U inverse. OK, and J can be of one of the following types. So J can be diagonal, and that's lambda 1, lambda 2, OK? Or it can be, again, diagonal. So I guess I, guess I could say that um, as follows. So it can be a diagonal with two distinct diagonal entries. Or it could be um, with the same diagonal entries. So D is, well, in that case, it would be really simple. Is, it would just be kind of, a, kind of a lambda times identity, right? So if lambda 1 equals lambda 2, that's why we distinguish the two. Or, and this is important, it could actually be of the following form where there's this one on top, so it's no longer diagonal, so maybe I shouldn't call this D anymore. Well, let's just let's just stay with with J, J, J. Because J could actually be uh, of this form. Actually there's one more if we were if we were to talk about um, Alpha, beta, minus beta, alpha. Okay, so we'll see how all these forms. Uh, oh, I mean, what do they correspond to? But so, so there's there's one such matrix, J, uh, that gets associated to the original matrix A. Okay, and then what's the relation between this J and that A? Well, it's this kind of a decomposition, which is called Jordan conical form decomposition. Um, and it might sound, it might look like, okay, it's, it's why, why is it, why is that a composition in, important? Um, so I'll tell you in a second. So, yeah, please. All right, so maybe, maybe I should say um, the first First one, well, in all of this, uh, lambdas correspond to the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So, assuming you know what the eigenvalues are right, of a matrix, you can have, uh, for a 2 by 2 matrix, you can have two real eigenvalues, right? Distinct eigenvalues. That would be that first case, right? This would be, these two cases would be, when you have a repeated eigenvalue, right? Lastly is when you have complex conjugate eigenvalues. So here you'd have lambda as alpha plus and minus i beta, okay? 
So these are the three cases. Um, okay. Okay. So let me uh, let me just say this. So um, e to the t times j is uh, simple to compute. Uh, I mean, so reason for for this decomposition is that is the following is you can compute the exponential uh, of a matrix so e to t a is well think about it it's identity plus t a plus t square over 2 a square and so forth right now think about replacing A with this. So it's U T J U inverse, right? It's just T A. And I put the T with J instead of what's the next one? Well what's A square? A square is U J U inverse, so times U J U inverse. Correct? So U inverse this u inverse with this u cancel, so it's u j square u inverse. And in general, this is true for any powers, right? A n is going to be u j n u inverse. So you see, it starts to make sense why the decomposition is useful because powers of a matrix can be computed in this relatively simple fashion, right? You, you only have to raise the, the one in the middle to the power n. The outside and the inside, you don't have to do anything. It's just u and e inverse. So here you would see it's u t squared j squared over 2 factorial u inverse and so forth. So in the end, you can do, and you can also replace identity with u and e inverse. So this is, you can factor out if you, if you want u on the left and u inverse on the right. And what's left is just the exponential of j. Okay, so it's so exponentiating a matrix e to the ta is simply taking the exponential of the of the special form matrix J and then multiply to left and right by this invertible matrix U. Okay, so the key here is that e to the Tj is easy to comp is easy uh, for is easy to be computed for all uh, types of J listed above. For instance, we s we saw that it, uh, what happens if well if there are two distinct uh, eigenvalues then. Right, it's exponentiating. Um, I guess the most in interesting one would be what if it's the same eigenvalue repeated, but it has this one, right? Because if the other type was just diagonal, so that's again, it's just exponentiating the, the term. So this was e to the lambda one t zero zero e to the lambda two t. Anybody knows what e to the TJ looks for this matrix. Again, it's a, a kind of a, well, it's not, maybe not as easy as one before. I guess I just take this, take, take powers of this, plug them in that series, and, and convince, convince yourself that this is e to the t, lambda t, t to the lambda t, or t lambda, I should say lambda t, lambda t. So there's this extra factor of t that appears. Okay, so that's the most complicated one, of course. Uh, well, the most unusual one, I should say. Um, also, if this is if this complex conjugate roots uh, eigenvalues, then um, uh, let's see. I believe this is e to the alpha t cosine beta t, e to the alpha t sine beta t, 
I'm not sure I have the, the signs in the right place, but I'm not off. I mean, even if it's not right, if this minus is here, it's, I think it's right. Um, okay. So, so again, um, this is the picture in t when you have two by two systems. But it, this picture kind of uh, generalizes to when you have, you know, n by n systems. So that's why this decomposition is very important. What are we looking, what are we interested in? Remember, we, where, where do we start? We started with saying, um, we'd like to understand the dynamics or the, the, the way the solutions behave, right, for the linear, linearized system, right? So, so to wrap it up, we start with a with our nonlinear system, right? And it has an equilibrium here. Then we linearize. So now the system looks. Um, it looks like this, and what happened with our, I mean, how, how is this x coordinate system different from the y coordinate system? I'll just put it y. y, y, so this is the y phase portrait, or the linearized phase portrait, this is the x phase portrait. It's a, it's, a, it's a translate. Well, A, A is not any metrics, but is the Jacobian metrics at this equilibrium. But not only that, we also translate the Y was, so remember Y was X minus X star. So, so the solutions that approach X star or start at X star in X in Y would we start and stay at zero, right? Solutions that kind of approach, if there was a solution that was approaching X star, then in the Y picture it would approach zero, right? So in other words, if the picture looks, I'll just, I'll just take an example, if the picture looks like this, Again, you can have various uh, behaviors, but let's say the picture looks like this. For the linearized system, so on one direction it goes in, on another direction it goes out, and then, of course, this is an unstable equilibrium, right, for this system. Then, when we said that we approximate the dynamical system with that dynamical system, what we mean is really that there is some sort of a transformation between the two. So there is some sort of direction. It's not. It's no longer a straight line, though, right? It could be some sort of a two curves, right? So it's it's kind of a deformed picture of whoops. I got it wrong. So this one is to go in. Okay. And again, I'm just plotting a few, but if if you kind of plot a lot of this, right? And then you plot the corresponding ones here, you will it's almost as if you look at at this picture drawn on a hill, right? And the hill is not straight like you don't look straight up. It's kind of a is deformed, right? So in that sense, we, we say that uh, the linearized phase portrait kind of uh, approximates the original phase portrait near that point, okay? And you can see this in, uh, in the examples, um, in the specific examples. Any questions on this? No. Yeah. It's kind of so what to me? So, so, so basically, by reading the behavior of the 
solutions of the linear system, we can infer behavior of the nonlinear system. It's easier to deal with this. It's a lot. Well, we could we could solve it explicitly. We've just solved it explicitly. So here I have. So the bottom line is that the nature of the uh, solutions of y dy dt equals a y near zero, but I should I should say that for this linear system there is only one. Typically there is only one equilibrium, and that's the zero, right? You always shift it so you it's it's kind of uh, you're looking at the zero equilibrium um, is determined is completely determined. by the uh, eigenvalues of A. Okay? Because you saw you saw that those again I only showed you in the two two by two case, but it's true in, in any in any uh, dimension that the eigenvalues will determine whether the solution approaches zero, that is the equilibrium, or not. Like think about any of these cases, what would take the first one to approach zero as t goes to infinity? We're always thinking of t, t go increasing. You need to have the lambda one and lambda two to be negative, right? If they're not negative, if they're if one of them is positive, right? It means that on at least on one direction is going to go away from zero. Take a look at the second one. Again, to have to have this, and again, it's not just this, but it's multiplied to an initial condition, right? To have that go to zero, it's enough that lambda is negative. And it's why is it enough? Well, this exponentially goes to zero. This exponentially goes to zero. This still goes to zero, but not that fast. You can ask it. Oh, no, I, I, you, you that. I About the t, right? Yeah. So even though this this kind of looks like it's it's growing, but if if lambda is negative, it goes up, it goes goes to zero. And also in this case, uh, if what what needs to happen so that all the components of this matrix go to zero, alpha has to be less than less than zero, right? So that's the real part of lambda. So. So let's let's kind of summarize. So if the real part of lambda is zero for all eigenvalues of A, then it means y star equals zero is asymptotically stable. Which translates in, and again, let me remind you, A is the Jacobian matrix at that equilibrium X star. So it means X star is asymptotically stable. So even when you have imaginary parts that are oscillating, you're still considered that asymptotically stable? Yeah, if the real part is negative, the, the, uh, and you have imaginary, imaginary I mean, uh, you have complex uh, eigenvalues, then what that translates into is, is spiraling in. Because right? you have some rotation given by cosine and sine. So this is lambda 1, 2 is alpha plus minus i beta, right? with beta not 0, of course. And alpha is negative. So that's the real part, right? Then it goes into, yeah? Okay, so that's that's nice because now you can go to your um, dynamical system, nonlinear, right? The one that you are interested in. Um, let's see, I'm interested in. Um, well, you can do it on the way up. Probably you can do it anything. Uh, this code that I showed you, the example of 5.1, is continuation of 4.1, which we haven't talked about. But 
it's just basically two species of trees that fight uh, for survival. Um, each has a certain intrinsic growth rate, a maximum stem population. So this is, once again, well, I think I factor out something, but a logistic growth for each, and then there is some competition for each. I mean, between between themselves. Okay? And you can use P-plane, whatever, but um, the point is that let's say you find, I don't know, how many equilibria, right? Then you can take one equilibrium at a, at a time for the nonlinear system, linearize, look at the eigenvalues of the of that matrix, and draw the conclusion. So, of course, you can do it all at once, but it's not. Again, you, you probably know by now that for different problems, it may not be as easy to to do it. But anyway, here it's it's just computing taking uh, all the, all the uh, equilibria and is saying for the zero zero equilibrium what what hap uh, you see what happens it computes df and df was the was kind of manually computed here right i mean it was coded in and it's it's done at a symbolic level uh, which is not that unusual as long as you have the system in front, I mean, if you can write the system by hand, you can probably write it in the computer, right? And taking the derivative symbolically, it's, I haven't heard of a case when you can write a function, and the computer cannot take a derivative, right? So as long as you can write the function in the computer, then uh, it means the computer knows those functions involved, and you can take derivatives, right? It's the other thing around the integration that's difficult. But so, so it's simply uh, doing that, computing the metrics, and then evaluating. You see how I evaluate at each one at a time. And the last thing is EIG is the compute the lambdas, and it does it numerically. So at this point, it's a numerical computation, right? So in principle, it has it has error, right? I mean that eigenvalue may not be. 0.07, I don't know, it's some, some sort of approximation, right? But again, it's, it's the level of trust uh, that you have on this. Like, if this is 0.07, it probably means it's positive, right? Okay. So you see that? So those eigenvalues are both positive, so that's real and positive, right? So that means it's uh, actually not asymptotic stable, but it's not even stable. It's unstable, right? Well, the one we've talked about so far is if both have, have real negative val uh, uh, parts, negative real parts, right? Then it's it's a stable equilibrium. Okay. Now let's look at this one. Why why would this why would this not be? Well, it's again you you look at the linearization and you see it it's um, not. On, on, there is one direction, right, corresponding to the eigenvector for this eigenvalue, on which the solution moves away, right? It's a, it has a positive e to the lambda two t. Lambda two is positive; it goes to infinity, right? Okay, so you can classify the equilibria by 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 this simple criterion. Okay, so I should say this. Um, so if so this is the key real part of lambda for all eigenvalues should be negative to have asymptotically stable, right? It gets tricky when it, when uh, the eigenvalues are actually uh, have have zero real part, okay? For nonlinear systems, it's kind of a it's a difficult analysis that needs to be needs to, needs to be made. For linear systems, no issue, no issue, right? It just means it's kind of going in circles. So it's stable, but not asymptotically stable. But uh, what's, what's clear is that if real part of lambda is positive for at least one eigenvalue of A, then uh, X star is unstable. I mean, unstable in the sense that it 
goes away from that point, right? Now again, you're talking you're talking in the neighborhood of the point, so you cannot extrapolate this to other systems. And just to convince you of that, uh, if you go to p plane, because again, p plane is good for two dimensional systems. Look in this uh, Van der Poel equation, which is we haven't talked about it, but it's actually uh, mentioned in the in your in your in your chapter five is the RLC, RLC circuit. So it comes from an electrical circuit. Um, but again, let me just show you. So if you look at the direction field, you know, it looks like this, right? And now, again, it's plotting the solutions forward and backward in time. So you cannot really see when I'm clicking. But what happens is there is an equilibrium here at zero. It's kind of easy to see by hand. Here's the system, right? So you set it equal to zero, you got x equal to zero, then you have to have y equal to zero, right? So obviously that's <clears throat> an equilibrium, and you can find it through this thing. But you see, then you can all, you also get it automatically the Jacobian at that point. Okay, you can do that by hand, but here is just giving you, right? How would you do it by hand? You would just take the derivatives with respect to x and the y of the first and the second get a two by two matrix and evaluate and then evaluate it at zero zero. Okay? So that Jacobian is more like one of the four forms we talked about. No 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 but this is this is the original A and it can be put it in one of those forms or it is always equivalent with one of those forms. But again you don't have to you, you just look at the eigenvalues and know that the exponential map, uh, exponential of that matrix, will how it, how it will behave, right? So, what are the real parts? Uh, it's positive, right? Positive. Real part is positive, right? It's uh, oh yeah, this is one. Is one eigenvalues, and the, these are the eigenvectors. So we're looking at the eigenvalues, and the real part is one. The, in fact, both are one, right? So repeat it, and, and it's one. So it's positive. What is the conclusion? It, it's unstable. In this case, is x star is zero, right? But it's the equilibrium you're doing the analysis, uh, and your conclusion was it, it's unstable. What does it say about the unstable? Uh, so you see, you can display the linearization. <coughs> And how does it look? You see, it just goes away in all directions. And it keeps going away, right? Whereas in the nonlinear system, does it f go away forever? No, you see, it kind of goes to this limited cycle. So this, this just shows you how, I mean, the picture that you saw there matches this, but only in a kind of a neighborhood of the, right? If you move away, because of nonlinearity, things are totally different. Okay, so I think some of the homework is, I mean, mo mo the whole homework you can do is with p plane, it would be just a matter of plotting the linearization, plot a face portrait for different. Now remember, if you have different equilibrium, you're going to have different linearization. At each equilibrium, it might be it might be totally different. Some are stable, some are unstable. Yeah. The eigenvectors give you uh, the direction in the linearized system, but in the nonlinear system, I don't know if what's a good one to to show. But like for instance, well, that's not a good one because it doesn't have um, um, predator prey, right? I think that's no, that's not good either. I think I should do competition species here. Okay, so you see here, this equilibrium is unstable, right? For this particular problem. Um, the linearization looks like I mean, you don't have to do anything, it's just a few clicks, right? The equilibrium, uh, the uh, linearization looks exactly, it's like it's one of those typical pictures, right? 
this, uh, the shapes are hyperbolized, right? So this, right, it kind of matches this in the neighborhood. But you see, as far as the lines, so, so this line, which would be, I don't know, you, you should display the, the vector, the directions to see which way it goes. Let's say it goes, uh, well, let's say it goes this way. This means it's, on this, there's a positive eigenvalue, right? Or at least real, yeah, positive eigenvalue. This is a straight line, whereas here it's not. It, there's no, it's like a curve, right? So, so in the nonlinear system, you don't have, I mean, you don't have lines, right? You have curves called stable curve and unstable curve. The, the, if you were to draw a tangent line to this, you would get, you would get the, 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 the eigen directions. Okay, and uh, I should say one, one, one uh, thing, and it's kind of crammed at the end here. But the dis for this discrete dyna uh, dynamical systems, and I'll just say um, the following. So if I have xn plus 1 is g of xn, right? And x star is a uh, equilibrium. Then how do you decide, uh, first of all, we should say, what does it mean that it's asymptotically stable? But it's the same thing. It goes towards that point, right, Up, upon iterations. Um, so then the, the eigenvalue method is is linearize around x star. So what is that supposed to say? Um, it says take dg of x star, right? Call this the matrix A. Yeah? And then look at the eigenvalues. So then linear, the linearized system would be Of course, not x, but some y, right? So linearized system. Uh, okay. And in this case, it's very easy to actually solve what is xn. You see, it's a times a x n minus 1. So it's a squared x n minus 1. So you can continue like this, right? It's just powers of a. So it's not an x. So this is not e to the t a. So you can continue, but it's, a, it's, it's powers of a. Well, when is a n going to 0? Well, the answer is when eigenvalues are an absolute value because what you do in that canonical form you're raising the eigenvalues to a power n so powers of a number when 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 is that going to zero it's when that number is between negative one and one if it's real and if it's complex also if the absolute if the modulus is is less than one right so that's the criterion for stability, uh, for discrete, is simply um, if lambda is less than one for all eigenvalues of again the Jacobian, if you want, of the right-hand side, then x star is asymptotic is asymptotically stable. Yeah? In the linear system, but in the linear system that's true, the question is, does it always uh, translate to the nonlinear system the same way? And it's always more delicate. I don't have a... The answer is not always yes. Um, and just Again, just a point, um, the docking problem that you've had in your homework, 
um, if you just look at the Jacobian eigenvalues of the Jacobian this number should be less than one not negative right for stability so it's very important that you know are you talking about a discrete system or a continuous system when you make the decision okay now there's a kind of a, a, a visual uh, representation of this discrete systems when we'll talk about this some uh, some some more but um, um, I hope that's give you enough uh, and remember some of the handouts I gave you and some of the links on the website has one of the one of the books actually has a whole slew of examples of discrete dynamical systems um, I want you to I mean this homework should be a breeze basically because you have everything from the previous so it's the same problems I picked them to be the same all you have to do is include this uh, eigenvalue computation okay and it's not even done by hand so it should be easy so for the ex with the extra copies extra time that you're gonna have from having such a simple uh, homework is go to those ex other examples um, and, and see this kind of see this behavior kind of this uh, analysis done for those systems okay thank you